Okay, this is 373, uh, week four, part eight. Um, I'm gonna take a sidebar now and do something else. I'm gonna take us into a total other direction for a little while, and you're gonna wonder what the fuck this has to do with Shakespeare, but uh, I'm gonna take us on a whole other journey. And then I'm gonna bring it back to Shakespeare, because that's what I do. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a real sad story, because um, I like, you know I like depressing things. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a real sad story right now. Um, I think it's interesting. So. In the uh, in the 1970s, uh, there was a woman in Hollywood. Her name was Sharon Tate, um, and this is what she looked like. Um, and that's, that, that's Sharon Tate, pregnant on the right. Uh, but Sharon Tate was a model um, and an actress. Um, uh, yeah, so Sharon Tate was a model and an actress, and she was in some movies. Um, and she was, she's very popular. She was on magazine covers and she was like a famous person. She was like a, just a famous, beautiful person who was a, a model and an actress and, and she was pretty cool and lived in Hollywood. Um, Sharon Tate married a guy named Roman Polanski. Now, Roman Polanski, um, and I have a lot to say about Roman Polanski, some of which I'll be saying next week. So if you know some things about Roman Polanski and you notice I don't talk about this week, I'll get to it later. Um, Roman Polanski uh, is an American film director. Roman Polanski directed two of the most famous movies ever made. Um, Roman, Pl and, and Roman Polanski directed Rosemary's Baby, which is a movie about um, uh, a woman who is impregnated possibly with the baby of Satan. It's a kind of horror movie. I don't think you would think it was very scary. It's a different kind of horror movie than you're used to seeing. It's not gory or violent in that way. It's sort of just, it's unsettling, but it's not like, ah, scary. Um, he also directed a movie called Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. And this is one of, um, one of the most famous crime movies in American history. And it's one of the best crime movies ever made. It's completely incredible. Um, and he was, and he directed a bunch of other movies too. And he's a, he's a just an incredibly famous, important guy who did a lot of important stuff. Um, so, uh, uh, but also he's a kind of terrible person. So Roman Polanski um, and Sharon Tate were this like power, they're like a Hollywood power couple. Um, they were, they would go to parties and they hung out with famous people and like, Pol cause Polanski was a big time director. So like people would, you know, be famous people at their parties, all the beautiful, cool Hollywood people, you know, Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski are like hanging out in their circles. Um, okay, so Sharon Tate, um, Sharon Tate is a very sad story. I don't, I don't quite even know, how, I don't really want to tell it, but, uh, you know, it's, I think it's, I think we should. Um, so Sharon Tate is, um, was pretty amazing. Um, but this, this picture of her on the right when she's quite pregnant, um, that picture was taken, um, just a couple of weeks before her death. Um, Sharon Tate was brutally murdered. Um, her and all of her friends were brutally murdered, and she was pregnant uh, at the time of the murder, and, and of, of course they, her, her baby did not survive. Um, her and her friends were brutally murdered. They were stabbed to death in the Hollywood Hills. Um, they were stabbed to death in the Hollywood Hills by this man. Um, this is Charles Manson. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so they were stabbed to death by, uh, so, sorry, didn't turn the around. They were stabbed to death by, by Charles Manson. Um, well, not by Charles Manson. I'll, I'll give you some more details about this. So what, what the story is, Charles Manson was a kind of, um, he was sort of a cult leader, I guess. Um, I, I probably, I'm going to give you a little extra context here. So in the sixties, um, there were sort of two forces in America in the 1960s. Um, uh, there were, the government was sending a lot of young people over to Vietnam to a war, they were drafting people. Um, and so these people weren't, they didn't want to be soldiers, they were forced to go and they hated it and they weren't good at it. And huge numbers of them died in the jungle uh, because the government was like fighting communism in another country. They weren't exactly threatening us. They just didn't like communists anywhere. Um, and so they were they were doing all, they were, there was a big the Vietnam War and people were going over there and they were fighting and they were dying. Um, and a lot of people were angry about that because they felt like these young American men were dying for no fucking reason. And, at the same time, you've got kind of, um, uh, you've got this group of people who are like the hippies, who are just like, man, like, why so much war? Why do people care about money? Let's just care about peace and love. And they were into music and sex and drugs and LSD and like poetry and like, man, can't we all just be cool? Um, 
And these were sort of, these were the, and they would hang out in parks. Washington Square Park was a big one, although a lot of them were in California because it's warmer. Um, but it was, it was a big cultural movement, the, the hippies. And they were basically, they're really a large part an anti-war movement. They were against the war. They just thought like, why do we have to go all the way over there and kill these people? And there were images on the news every night. Um, Cause it was like the soldiers were killing like, you know, the, the enemy wasn't just like a bunch of monsters in uniform. It was just like a village full of people. And we, we, we were dropping napalm on them and like burning these villages to death. And of course, the nuclear bomb invented in 1945, which was quite a bit earlier, but it was still scary that there were all these, you know, nuclear bombs were starting to get out into the world. People were, different countries had them and people were worried about nuclear war. And the hippies were like, man, why do we have to do all of that? Like, let's just be peace. And I'm simplifying this, obviously, but... Um, so these were the two forces, but by the 70s, um, some of that had soured and it wasn't going as well. Um, like the war, you know, a lot of people had died in the war and a lot of the drugs got harder and scarier and, and, and it wasn't, something was a little off. And America wasn't really quite sure what they thought of the hippies. On the one hand, it seems kind of nice to care about peace and love and understanding, but also these were kids that didn't have jobs and were very dirty and also were doing drugs and maybe the drugs are dangerous, but they, you know, I don't know. So people weren't sure. So Charles Manson, and a lot of the hippies were quite young. Now, Charles Manson was not super young. Charles Manson was in his 30s, but he was hanging out with teenage girls all the time. And it was just a kind of, he played music. He was a musician. He wanted to, he wanted to be a musician. He played the guitar. He wasn't very good at it. Um, Charles Manson, um, he sent, uh, he, he sent like a, a recording of his stuff because he wanted a radio contract. And the movie producer turned, tur turned him down. And so we, I don't want, to make your music. And Charles Manson was mad and he wanted revenge. And he was, you know, in this kind of drug cult with these teenagers and, and he, they were, and they were, and they, you know, they had started off with probably, you know, the hippies and started off with lighter stuff like marijuana and LSD, but they had moved into the sort of more dangerous drugs. Um, and, and he kind of was in like a cult. He was like a cult leader of these cause he was older. And so he got them, all these kids got high on drugs and he said, man, I'm so mad at that record producer for not giving me a contract. And he said, I want, I want you to go to his house and fucking kill his whole goddamn, let's just kill them all. And so he sent these, he didn't go himself, but he sent these kids with knives um, into like the Hollywood Hills where this record producer lived to fucking murder the guy because he wouldn't give Charles Manson a, a contract uh, to be a famous radio, to be a famous musician. Um, the problem was, um, was that the guy didn't live there anymore. He moved and he sold his house. And who did he sell his house to? Well, he sold his house to Roman Polanski and Sharon Tate. Um, so when the, when these kids got there ready to commit murder for Charles Manson, the cult leader, um, uh, the guy wasn't there, but Sharon Tate was there. Now, Roma Plants was not there. He was away, but Sharon Tate was there eight months pregnant and she was having drinks with some friends and just hanging out. And these kids went to the house and they murdered everyone in that house. And it, it is one of the most horrific crimes in American history in terms of the kind of shocking front cover newspaper thing. It horrified, because this is like beautiful people that we, it's like a celebrity. These are beautiful, it's a beautiful celebrities in the safe Hollywood Hills and these dirty teenagers who came in with butcher knives. And, and, and when I say kill them, I don't mean they just like stabbed them or shot them. They stabbed them like 30, 40 times, drew on the wall with blood. This was the front cover of every newspaper forever. This was like a huge thing. Now I'm going to say something really exaggerated. And, and I don't want you to take this that seriously, but I'm just going to paint you a little picture. The government's going to war in Vietnam and everybody's dying. And the hippies are like, man, can't we have peace, love, and understanding and happiness? And why do we have to care about money and violence so much? Can't we just care about love and peace and, and being t togetherness and all these hippie things? And America was like, man, I'm not sure about those hippies. Maybe that is kind of a good point. Maybe war is bad, but then also, uh... and then the Sharon Tate murder occurred. When the Sharon Tate murder occurred, I think everybody was sort of like, oh, hippies are fucking bad. Um, we got to make drugs illegal. We got to crack down on these people. They need jobs. And then you head into the 1980s where everyone, where young people are no longer hippies. Young people now want to make as much money as humanly possible and wear suits and go to Wall Street. So the, I, I really, I, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I think the Sharon Tate murder shifted the culture into that sort of Wall Street greed, um, make as much money as possible. Um, you know, war is profitable. Um, and it sort of shifted the country. And that, that same fight you see between conservatives and liberals now was being played out in the, in the 60s in that way. And I think Sharon Tan, it's a little, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I think it was kind of a turning point. Anyway, I'm going to pick up this story. Um, uh, I'm going to pick up this story in the next thing.